Will AI replace programmers? This was wild for me to watch. As a self-taught programmer, and I'm, I'm still a noob in the game. Y'all are senior engineers. I'm a womb engineer. But this was wild to watch for me. And so let's just watch it. It blew my mind because I've been using AI since it dropped. You know, I learned how to code, which I still encourage people to do. Our goal that you need to learn how to code if you're gonna if you're gonna use AI. But watching Lex Friedman, who's been an engineer for so 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 long, I don't know how long actually, but it seems like he's a senior engineer, and he loves this stuff. And anyways, let's watch this because I've been using AI since it launched and it took me from being like able to get anything done, but using Stack Overflow is so slow and I'm extra slow. That's like the difference between a beginner and an expert is the speed and obviously a ton of other things that I don't even know. Just like knowing stuff in their head without having to look everything up. You know, that's the type of engineer I was. What was that, two years ago? I don't know, a year and a half in, whatever. But now, we have AI and I feel like I can build anything. It just takes iteration. It takes iteration and ideas. So watching this video blew my mind. Okay, next up, I got a question on AI, which I emotionally connected with. I'll condense it as follows. Hello, Lex, I'm a programmer. He emotionally connected with, first off, you know this is going to be good. And I have a deep fear of slipping into irrelevance because I am worried that AI will soon exceed my programming skills. Let me first say that I relate to your fear. It's scary to have a thing that gives you a career and gives you meaning to be taken away. For me, programming is a passion. And if not for this podcast, it would probably, at least in part, be my profession. So... All right, so from what I've watched of his podcast, like he's a very engineer type. I, I see this all day long in the chat. We literally had somebody just comment says, why, saying, why do you think this iterative process will converge to something useful? Literally everything iterative, every iterative process converges to something useful unless you stop. So a senior engineer just came in there, asked that in the chat, and I know he's an engineer because he asked this question and he said, do you think expert programmers would produce something useful without new knowledge like AI? And that kind of showed me the true meaning of that first question. Why do you think this iterative process will converge to something useful? Well, because every, like, you know, kids learn how to walk, our brains, neural networks in themselves, our iterative process is going over and over again. But then he kind of exposed himself to the, the end part of it saying, do you think this expert programmer would produce something useful without AI? And it's all starting to click. I get a lot of like hate when I talk about AI or using AI all day. And I just like, it looks like I don't even know how to code. I get a lot of haters coming through saying like, yo, this guy doesn't even know how to code. He just used AI all day. It's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm really not the best coder in the world. I had, I did about a year and a half of four hours a day, every single day studying Python, maybe it was two years by the time ChatGPT came, and then I started showing everything. I, I, was, I was showing every day I was using AI because it made me that much better. So to hear like this fear in homeboy's voice right here, and to see these comments every day about how like, oh, he sucks, you know, I'm, a, I'm an engineer of 30 years, yeah, yeah, it's like, what? Oh, people are really scared. So this is why this video to me was just like, holy, Holy F, bro. I need to step on the gas here. I need to step on the gas here because my competition is trembling. All right, I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm not I'm going to try to watch more of this without commenting, but it's just like this is a mind-blowing time because I always talk about these regime shifts. We talk about it a lot in trading, but this happens in technology as well. We have the internet, huge regime shift. People made billions of dollars. We had mobile apps, huge regime, regime shift, billions of dollars. AI is like the biggest thing we've ever seen. And to hear that it's taking away from the goats, you know, I always looked at, I, I didn't learn how to code till I was 30 years old because I was scared. I thought Lex Freedom and, and, and people, people like him, like, you, you know, you smart people, really smart 
coders, go to school for this, Stanford, Harvard, all this, always on the computer. Like I'm on the computer too, dude, but I was a gamer. I was on my laptop. I was too scared to learn how to code my whole life because I didn't think I could be, I could learn, be as smart as these people. So to finally know how to code three and a half years in, I'm still a womb engineer, but I got AI and to hear the confirmation of homeboy who we've seen on YouTube for a decade now, I don't know. He's interviewing all the top folk to see him scared and to see the comments every single day. It's all clicking now. It's all clicking. So if you kind of know how to code and you're using AI, use this as confirmation to step on the gas while we have it. You know, I have my suspicions about AI being subsidized by VCs right now. Clearly, we're getting these $20 uh, a month plans and there's still limits. That means that they're, it's just doing the Uber, like cheap Ubers, you know, cheap Ubers, cheap Airbnbs, and then let rank, rank up the fees later. Okay, same game plan. Silicon Valley, let's get it. But to see senior engineers, to see them scared of us womb engineers, us sperm engineers, that means we better step on the gas, dog. Let's go. Podcast, it would probably, at least in part, be my profession. So I get an uncomfortable feeling every time Claude, the LLM I use for coding at this time, just writes a lot of excellent, <laughs> approximately correct code. I think you can make a good case that it already exceeds the skill of many programmers, at least in the same way that uh, the collective intelligence of Stack Overflow exceeds the skill of many programmers, many individual programmers. But in many ways, it still does not. Uh, but I think eventually, more and more, the task, the profession of programming will be one of writing natural language prompts. I think the right thing to do, and uh, what I'm at least doing, is to ride the wave of the ever-improving code-generating LLMs and keep transforming myself into a big-picture designer versus low-level tinkerer. Dude, this is so wild. For the last two years, first they laugh at you. I don't even know the saying. Whatever the saying is, the whole first laugh at you or like take you down, like all these comments on my videos all the time, Moondab doesn't know what he's doing, and then they join you eventually. You hear that admission, right? He said, I'm, I'm going to lean in. I'm going to ride the wave. A lot of y'all senior engineers are going to get left behind because you're going to be those dudes that are still riding the horse and like, oh, the horse is better. Okay. Lex coming. Lex is coming. You coming? I don't know. If I had 30 years of experience in coding right now and I seen some young cats coming up and have two, three years coding programs faster than me, dude, dude, cursor is nuts. Cursor is nuts. I just got, oh man, you can get like nine hours of stuff done in three. I don't know. Probably take 19 years for a senior engineer that's trying to do it all by themselves. This is wild, dude. No shade to, to, uh, to Lex or anything like that. It's, it's all love. It's always love here. It's just for me, this is mind blowing to see the admission of, yo, this stuff is as good or if not better than us. And in reality, my mind is in the future. So I just seen what we see now, dude, GPT 4, 3.5. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I couldn't be more excited. And this really, really helped staple it. So I watched this, I don't know, two, three days ago. And I was like, okay, yeah. F all these little things in my mind about having too many AI subscriptions, yada, yada. I'm going to pay as much as possible with on AI. I'm going to do it in an efficient way but I'm gonna be using it as much as possible to create as much as I possibly can because I've seen it so many times with these tech startups. Everything is cheap, 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 cheap. For the start, let's get all users, get as many users as possible. A16Z, 60 mil, 100 mil, a bill, boom, <laughs> boom, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, until that runs out, until that runs out and then price goes up. You already see this, dude. Open AI 2000 pricing. Sounds like, look, OpenAI's new models could cost up to $2,000. Y'all thought I was capping a couple weeks ago with that video. You thought I was capping with that video a couple weeks ago. Come on, B. If you're using it, you see it. If you're using it, you see it. If you're not using it, you're probably a hater. What I'm doing and uh, what uh, I recommend you do is continually switch to whatever state-of-the-art tool is for generating code. So for me currently, I recently switched from 
VS Code to Cursor. And before that, it was Emacs to VS Code Switch. So Cursor is this editor that's based on VS Code that uh, leans heavily on LLMs and integrates the code generation really nicely into the editing process. So it makes it super easy to uh, continually use the LLMs. So what I would advise and what I'm trying to do myself is to learn how to use it and to master its code generation capabilities. I personally try to now allocate a significant amount of time to designing with natural language first versus writing code from scratch. So using my understanding of programming to edit the code that's generated by the LLM versus sort of uh, writing it from scratch. So I think, I think he has a good point here. Um, obviously, eventually this will be, the design will be taken over by AI if it's not already. But what I've found, even with my, like, my, my sperm engineer knowledge, sometimes, well, you see it too, probably. Being able to understand like how this should kind of be set up or setting up the system ahead of time, both both reasons. Again, please excuse me, I'm I'm nowhere near y'all. Having that expertise and why I still recommend people learn Python from scratch, no AI around, don't even look at the AI, is because if you understand how it's supposed to work, you're able to give tips to the AI and you're extra powerful. So I think that's where the edge for senior engineers it's always going to be. So while you may feel like, oh, this thing's attacking my job or this thing's going to take my job over, it's not, dude. If you have 30 years of experience, bro, I respect anybody that's got 10,000 hours in anything. Most people can't focus. They, they can't name one thing they've done for 10,000 hours except sleep. So if you have your 10,000 hours in, bro, like, Big ups to you. Love. Much love. So much love. So many 777s seven, seven, coming at you, dude. Because that's hard work to focus for 10,000 hours on something. And just know those that can be coders, engineers, high senior engineers, and actually lean into the AI, you're going to stomp on the necks of us noobs with AI. It's just let the ego down. See something new coming. Cars drive themselves now, bro. You got your Tesla. You whip in the Tessie. Come on, dog. You already know. Just lean in. If you got experience, we have like three years. I know people building stuff with three months of experience. Two months, one month, one day. You know? Like, you're going to stomp on them because you got 10 years of experience in coding. 20 years, 30 years. 15 years, seven years. I don't know. More than me. So let's get it, dog. Lean in. Lean in. Let's go. So he's seeing this. He's saying it. That's what he's telling you. Let's let him tell you. And then using the LLM to generate small parts of the code. I see it as a skill that I should develop in parallel to my programming skill. I think this applies to many other careers too. Don't compete with AI for your job. Learn to use the AI to do that job better. But yes, it is scary and some deep sort of human level, the threat of being replaced. Uh, but at least I think we'll be okay. Oh my God, he's so sad, which is the crazy part. Like all love to him, dog, come on. You're gonna stomp on everybody. You know so much more about code. You got a podcast, so you're like, you're doing your podcast thing, I get that. So you're just like sad that you're gonna not be able to be creative, whatever. But like he's he's encompassing the fear I see every day in my chat. Every single day. I go live every day and I see it in my chat. It's like, don't you think AI is gonna be uh I mean Tom Tomas or whatever, he's he, he lit it off today. He started this whole discussion. Saying, Don't you think don't but but don't you but don't you he said, why do you think that it's this iterative AI process will converge to something useful? Don't, don't you think that senior engineers could come up with some good stuff without AI? Don't you think that, Moondav? It's like, yeah, dude, come on, step on the gas. Don't, don't, don't fade AI. If you fade AI, if you, bro, stop it. AI is the wave. Lex is on the wave. Come on, B. Don't be scared. You're not smarter than AI. It's a collective of everything. Use your, your smarts and just step on, step on our necks, B. 